Hello, my name is Arun Gupta and I work for Oracle. In this multi-part screencast series, I am showing you how Oracle Enterprise Pack for Eclipse or OEPE provides extensive tooling around Java E6 and Glassfish. In this multi-part series, so far I have shown you how OEPE allows you to download, install and configure Glassfish very easily from within the IDE. In this second part, I will show you how a simple Java EE6 application can be created using JSP, servlets, Enterprise Java Beans, and including EGB timers. Subsequent parts will show and talk about Java Persistence API 2, Java Surfaces, and RESTful web services using JAXRS. So let's get started and go to our IDE. This is our OEPE ID. In order to create a Java EE6 application, let's go to Project Explorer, right click new dynamic web project give the project name as hello world choose glassfish server open source edition 3 as the target runtime which is also the java e6 reference implementation take the default 3.0 as the dynamic web module version which is required for java e6 take all the defaults click on finish The project gets generated for us. If we expand the project, the web content, and this is our index.jsp, which is shown over here. This is how the code looks like, and this is a visual preview. You know, in order to run this project, right click here, click on run as, and choose run on server. The Glassfish server is already running, so we, that is selected. Click on finish and the page gets published for us nice and easy. Switching gears for a second, if I double click on Glassfish server, it shows me the different um, options that are available. These are the usual ones, server name, host name, directory, admin name and password, port numbers, etc. I want to highlight one of the publishing options. The default is never publish automatically. What that means is as a developer, every time you make a change to your resources, you are going to deploy the project explicitly to the underlying runtime, which is Glassfish in this case. However, you can also say automatically publish when resources change. Change this to zero. What that means is anytime a resource, that is a JSP or a servlet or a POJO or a de de deployment descriptor is changed, IDE takes care of automatically deploying your app to the underlying runtime. This really boosts your productivity and the IDE takes care of the mundane details like deployment. So let's save the preferences here and go back to our index.jsp here, change the text to hello glassfish world, save the page here, go to my browser, refresh it and the change is instantly visible to us. Now let's add a servlet to this application. goes in the package server, call it hello servlet, click on next. You can specify certain options over here like name, description, initialization parameters, additional URL mappings, click on next. You can also generate certain standard methods like do get, do post, do put and others. We're going to generate do get and do post for now. Click on finish and this generates our uh, template POJO class. So hello servlet extends HTTP servlet. It's got add web servlet annotation and you can see the entire Java doc, everything integrated in the IDE itself. These are my do get and do post methods. I need to copy some code here. So let me select here and copy the code from a notebook. So let's go to notebook. Copy the code here. and paste it in the browser, resolve the imports and now we are ready. So if I can minimize this and I can show you the console where the log is being displayed. As soon as I save this file, you can see the deployment automatically proceeded. We go to our browser and we say hello servlet here and here is our um, simple hello servlet that is being available to us nice and easy.
Let's add an enterprise Java bean to this application and access it from this servlet. Right click, create new other and we search for session. Session bean. I'm going to pack it, specify the package as server bean as class name as hello bean. Um, you could have a stateless, stateful, or a singleton bean. A singleton bean is a new concept introduced in um, Java E6, specifically Enterprise Java Bean 3.1, that allows you to have a single instance of bean across the VM per application. And we're going to have a no interface um, bean. That means it's a POJO class not implementing any interface. Click on finish. And this is how my bean looks like. Let's add a simple business method here. simple method called as say hello takes a string parameter concatenates it with the string hello and returns the response back so let's save the bean in my servlet I need to inject this bean so I inject the bean and resolve the imports and down here I could say Let's put this in an h2 tag, for example, and I could say bean dot say hello, and I could put this in a, say hello to my friend Duke, and I put my closing h2 tag and a semicolon. So let's save the file here, and you will see the deployment goes through nice and quick very easily. Go to our browser, refresh the page, and here is our response from our um, bean. Finally, in order to create an EJB timer, I'm going to right click here, new, select EJB timer, specify the package name, give a class name, and EJB timer syntax has been drastically improved in Java EE 6. It's using a cron-like syntax. So as you can see, it says execute an event every 10 seconds, every minute, from hours 8 a.m. to 11 p.m weekdays, every day of the month, every month of the year, and each year. And we click on finish. And this shows our my timer class as it's being generated. It's a stateless enterprise Java bean. You got a method over here with add schedule annotation and all the cron syntax that we talked about is added over here. As a result, this bean when gets gets deployed, this method body is executed every 10 seconds. So if I minimize the class again, you can see that the um, class was automatically deployed and the event is already firing. So that's pretty cool. You know, JSP, a servlet, an EJB, and an EJB timer in literally a matter of few minutes, you could pull together an application. And finally, let's let me leave you with some references. You can download Glassfish from glassfish.org. You can download Oracle Enterprise Pack for Eclipse from Oracle Technology Network. For any Glassfish related question, feel free to shoot a question at Glassfish Forums and follow us on Twitter at Glassfish Handle. Thank you.